But you guys got another video here for you. Everybody needs this free USB toolkit that you can create with a free tool. And I'm going to show you how to do it in this video. We're going to be using Windows 11. It's a pretty old tool, but it's been around for a very long time. It's called Win10 XPE, and it's made by Chris. And I'm pretty sure there's a few other people that have probably contributed to this particular project. Now, this project hasn't been updated since 2023, but you can still get it working with Windows 11 if you want to do that. You will need some fettling and some tweaking, but you can see here, this tool will help you create your own WinPE. This means you can make your own WinPE and add in your own tools, your own portable tools that you want to do. For instance, recovering data from unbootable PCs, and you can also perform recovery operations for your PC. And this also make changes to the operating system, backup data, clone the drive, all that sort of good stuff. And if you're a PC repair tech, then something like this is essential. Now, of course, there is others out there that are already been created. And some of these do have pirated software on them and things like that. So it's always best to create your own. And that way you can put in your own software, which you've paid for. So that's what we plan on doing here. We're going to be using this particular tool it's called WinBuilder. And there's a bunch of free tools inside here, which are all freeware, which you can use. Now, it's important to mention that you're going to get notified by your antivirus sometimes for certain programs, just as you would with any sort of script or any sort of application that you're using that hasn't been registered. And again, I'm just bringing this to your attention because I'm going to get a bunch of people in the comments section saying my antivirus flagged it and deleted it. I run all of these in a virtual environment. I turn the antivirus off and I build it from there. That way I know I'm not going to be causing any issues to my main system. So it's important that you do that. It's important also that you use the correct version of Windows. He has a list of all of the builds of Windows that work with this particular script. Now, of course, you're not running this as a daily driver, so it doesn't really matter whether the build is end of life because you're using it as a, a boot up device to boot up to a Windows PC that might not be booting. So you can pull your data off, do data recovery or whatever it is you need to do with these particular toolkits. They're very easy to create, but you will need to mess around until you get it exactly how you want it. So there's going to be a few failures, a few errors here and there but you work it out. So a word of warning here, use at your own risk. This guide is provided for informational purposes only. I'm not responsible for any damage to your computer or loss of data or any other consequences that may result from following these instructions. Proceed with caution and ensure you have a backup of all your data. And it's always advisable to run these into a virtual machine. That way you're not messing around with your own PC. That's basically how I do it. Once you're happy with all of that, then you can go ahead and download it. You can hit the project file right here. This is the last release that he's done, which is in 2023. Yes, it's a bit old now, but it still does work. People have asked me, can you get this working on Windows 11? I have a Windows 11 ISO right here, and I have the package already downloaded. What I'm going to do here is extract this into the same folder. I normally create a folder called WinPE or work folder, and we're going to go ahead and do that right here. So I've extracted all the contents, now, it's important that you go into that folder that you've extracted, and then you need to make sure there's three files here, and they're zip files or seven zip files, and you need to use seven zip to extract these because they're all combined together, all three of them. So what we're going to do here is we're going to right-click on here, and uh, we're going to unzip this. Now, I do a lot of my work inside virtual machines. That way, I'm not messing around with my PC. But if you have a whole PC lying around and you want to work on that and use that as your, uh, you know, lab lab PC or work PC that you like to do a lot of stuff, then you can do. You can see once we've unpacked this again, there is an executable file here. So what we need to do here is we're going to quickly mount our Windows ISO. You can get the 7-zip file right here. It's free to download. I've been using this for years Again, it's not registered, but it is a very, very good program. And I've been using it to uh, zip files and compress files down. So that's what I use. Anyway, what I'm going to do here now is go back into my work folder here. And we're going to mount our Windows 11 ISO. So let's go ahead and do that right here. So you can right click on this and you can mount it. Now, my virtual machine seems to be playing up a little bit. Maybe it's updating in the background. But once we've uh, mounted it, we can highlight all these files and we can uh, copy them or drag them into a Windows 11 folder. 
And this will be in our work folder that we've created right here. So I've got a blank folder, just gonna paste them inside here. Now you need to do this because this is the way we work. We're gonna be using this uh, ISO, extracted ISO here, and this is all of our files. So once you get a working uh, build and you get a working ISO, you can then start to add stuff to it. Once you get a stock standard vanilla version of WinPE, you can start adding things to it. So now we've ready to open up our application. So what we're gonna do here is go to Win uh, 10 XPE, and we're gonna run this executable file here. So I'm just gonna double click on this. And once we double click on this, it should start to open now. Just wanna quickly show you here, I'm in a virtual machine and I have disabled my antivirus program. This is because some applications some some scripts will get flagged as malicious when they're not. And this is just the way it is. So I'm gonna run this as it is. And what this will do is it will say, do you wanna run this? I'm gonna say yes. And now we've got this open. Okay, so there is the actual application. Just gonna let it populate right here. And it looks a little bit complicated, but once you break it down into sections, it is quite easy to understand. So the first thing we need to do is select our Windows 10 or Windows 11 source folder. That's the ISO that we've extracted. You can download them via here as well on this program, but we've done it ourselves. So now we're gonna load our ISO that we've extracted. And I'm gonna go down here and look for my WinPE folder. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna load up that Windows 11 extractive folder here. It's inside here, there we go. So all we need to do here is select this, click OK, and it will then start to mount that for us into the program. There we go. That's now done. And now you should see it populated right here, Windows 11 Pro, and there it is right there. So what we need to do next is we need to go through and take a look at the build core. Inside here, this is where you can configure your build. So in the main in interface right here, we can run all programs from RAM. Now, if you have a lot of RAM, then you can run programs from RAM. If you don't, i.e. the PC that you are booting to has a very little bit of RAM on it, then obviously this is not advisable because it's gonna struggle because it might only have four gigs of RAM. So always only use this run with programs with RAM if you have a fair bit of RAM. So the cache size, again, you can change this to something more suitable to yourself. I'm just gonna leave that as is right here because I just wanna get a base build done and then we can tweak this a little bit later on. The keyboard layout, again, is self-explanatory. Choose which keyboard layout you want. I'm using the host OS's choice. You can use uh, another different type of keyboard layout if you live in a different country. Uh, Windows installer files, uh, we can tick that one if we want to, but I'm gonna leave this unchecked for now. I'm gonna keep this super simple and try and get it to work, and that way we can tweak some of these later on uh, once I've got a working ISO. And that way it's trial and error, basically. You can uh, add stuff if it doesn't work and you get an error, go back, uncheck it, and so on. And that's the way you have to build these. It, they take a bit of time, but once you get a working system, you're pretty much good to go. So here you can change the wallpaper if that's really essential. You can see there is a wallpaper in here, but all you need to do is make sure you copy same size wallpaper into the folder here and name it exactly what it's been named here. Uh, rename your file to this file here and it will use your wallpaper instead of his one. You can delete that one afterwards. Make sure you get the size right because if it's too big, it's not going to work for you. So make sure you get the right size. So depending on how you set yours up, I've got this wallpaper right here. I will need to rename this from Brightech JPEG to whatever his one is right there. I'm not gonna walk you through every single little silly step like this because that's self-explanatory. Just replace the file there with your file and name it exactly what it's named right there. Okay, so we're back at the main interface section right here. And again, we can now go to additional options right here. It's self-explanatory, just go through here and explore some of the settings that you can change you can see here we have the Windows title bar color. If you want to change that to whatever color you want, you just choose the number you like and change that number in that box there. There's also uh, start all back skin right here. You can change that right here as well, uh, just depending on how you want to set yours up to make it 
your own color scheme that you can do if you want to. And again, just go through here. Internet options right here, or network options. Again, you can see here, you can configure these if you need to. I'm leaving these as is right now just because I want to get a stock build done. So to see whether it still works with um, Windows 11. So once we get that all done and we've got all of the settings done, we can go back in here later on. So that is the build core sections. That is the bulk of it, really. Once you get all these configured the way you like, you're pretty much good to go here and go down into the app section. Now, the app section is going to be a case of choosing some of the apps inside here. Now, these are all freeware apps inside here. Some of these you might not need. The ones you don't need, you can uncheck. And if you have your own selection of applications, you can add those in into the add your own folder and add your own custom uh, apps in here, portable apps, and it will load up. And you can create shortcuts to the desktop if you want to do that as well. So we're trying to keep this as simple as possible, but just run through here and basically select what you want and what you don't need. For instance, I don't need a Windows calculator inside here, and there's going to be some other things that I don't need, so I'm going to uncheck those. But if you need everything in here, then you can go ahead and check it. Uh, some of these might not work, so you might need to go in and uncheck it again because it might be broken because it is an older application. So bear that in mind. It's not been updated since 2023. So some of these might cause errors. And it's a bit of trial and error, so you are going to need to mess around with some of this as you go. So let me go ahead and we'll go through here. So I'm just going to uncheck this. Now inside here, when you click on this, uh, you can uncheck it like so and just work your way through the list right here and uncheck what you don't need and uh, the ones that might be causing you issues, just uncheck them. You can check the error report at the end. So you can see here, run from USB or run from RAM. So if you're on low RAM systems, use run from USB. If you've got a lot of uh, you know, memory on the system you're booting to, you can run it from RAM and you can make some of the configuration changes right here. Just work your way through. Now, once you're happy with all your selection, you can hit the play button and this will start to uh, configure your ISO and build that you've just created. And it's going to take a bit of time and you're going to see some pop ups from command prompt popping up on the screen. That's normal. Uh, just be patient. If you get errors, then you've made a selection or you've done something that has broken the system and you need to go back in and change it. You can look, read the error code that it gives you and you can then fix that. So if you're really, really careful and you're going through this, it will take a bit of time, but these things do. But once you get it, it will be your own personal build that you've created yourself. And I'm just going to let this go through and finish. You can see there's 29 steps here. And once it's completed, it will have the ISO file and we can then test it and boot up that ISO file and we can take a look. Now, I've not spent a lot of time on customizing a complete build. I will do and uh, if you want to see a more in-depth video on this sort of stuff, then let me know in the comments section down below. Just keeping this basic for you guys at the moment, just for people that want to create a Windows 11 WinPE for themselves. So once we're done, we're going to use a virtual machine to boot it up. And you can see it's loading up right here. We get the load up screen. Windows 11 is now loading. And you should see something looking like this with your own wallpaper if you added your own wallpaper and your own applications on here and it's that simple that's how quick and easy it is you can drop this onto Ventoy if you want to once you've completed it and you can have all your own applications now I can tell you right now this will save you a lot of trouble if you have problems with PCs if you want to pull uh, data off of that PC if you want to clone the drive if you want to maybe uh you know reset the windows password you can do all of that with this particular toolkit it's super easy and super useful to set up and you can have your own custom winpe which is something a lot of people probably don't know how to do anyway my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk just want to say a quick shout out to all my youtube members i appreciate the support i shall catch you in the next video bye for now